All right, guys, so back around 2015, uh, Coach Ron Wolforth from Texas Baseball Ranch came to the old armory and he, and he turned me on to this idea of cycling our, the intensity of our days. And so we had, uh, and we ran with it. And so now when we train here, we throw six days a week, but we don't throw hard six days a week. This is Wes McGuire, by the way, our director of player development. Say hi, Wes. Yeah. All right. And, um, and so we don't throw hard six days a week. We have two heavy days two recovery days thereafter, and then two moderate days in between when we're working on our connection, our drill work, and things like that. But a source of corruption has arisen there because when we're doing these low intent days or, or moderate intent days, our recovery days, um, or our drill days, we see a bunch of guys going through the, the drills at sort of half speed or going through slow motion drills. Well, what the problem with that is in the intimate link between perception and action, the body needs relevant, not, not just postural information, not just, not just movement information, but sensory information as well. And, and the body responds, you know, when we're working drills in slow motion, we're really, we're really giving it information about the postures that it's going, especially if it's in super slow motion. We're giving information about posture, but it responds better to information about inertia or the forces that you're creating. And so we're not getting specificity in our training on the low intent days because we're not including those relevant inertial cues that we need, the sensory information that we need. So, we want to figure out ways to, to, to maintain your intent, which is why we have a picture of the radar gun. This is Wes's uh, most recent throw here, um, 94.8. He killed it. Um, it was good. Okay. And um, so, uh, so the point is, when you're doing your drill work, if you have access to a radar gun, one good way to use the radar gun is not to see if you can max out every day, but to see if you can achieve a level of about 90% of your max that day. So, so that way we get, we get relevant sensory information regarding the inertia or the forces produced, which is way better than slow motion reps that give you just information about your posture and, uh, and, and proprioceptive information about where your joints are in space, because that information is going to change completely as the, the movement moves, uh, transitions from low intensity to high intensity. Okay. So one way that you can do this is on your recovery days, we have you thrown in our sock. And the reason we have you thrown in the sock with a seven ounce ball, seven ounce ball, uh, force equals mass times acceleration. So we're able to produce close to the, the amount of inertia that we need, but with less stress on, on, on the joints, okay? So um, in the sock, the, on recovery day, so show them how that works, Wes. We can just, we just throw in the sock, and we can still train at near full intent to mimic the inertial sensory information that we need and get less stress on the elbow and shoulder, okay? So, so that's one thing. And another way that we can control, uh, that we can control the forces on the recovery days is to simply limit the degrees of freedom, okay? So, for example, when you're doing a marshal or a marshal with a switch or one of our reverse pronations, you're gonna put the wrong foot in front. And now, we're limiting the degrees of freedom in the lower half, and we're still throwing at full intent. So go ahead. And so, on recovery days, it's, uh, we can still get great inertial information for our arm. We can, re, uh, we can reorganize the physiology. We can, we can, uh, the newly forming cells can be given stress so they align in the appropriate formations. But also, we can mimic the neurologic input that we get and the sensory information that we need about inertia and the forces that we create. So instead of limiting uh, the stress by limiting intent and throwing easy, which would give us faulty sensory information regarding inertia and forces, we would control that, the, the stresses by limiting degrees of freedom on, on recovery days. And then on our drill days, on our connection days, we need to be at least working at about 90% so that we get good information, good feedback regarding the inertial forces, of the, 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 the forces that we're creating, as opposed to just going slow motion through the posture. So we make sure that we don't just get near, intent, uh, near trans, uh, near transfer, but far transfer as well, because we, we need the kind of uh, accurate sensory and motor information to ensure that we get specificity that gives us the transfer that we're looking for. You agree, Wes? Yeah. Absolutely, thanks. All right, cool, thanks.